What's up, everybody? I'm with two new friends. I got Ed, I got Kyle. What up? As you can see, we're about to tour their van. I just got their van name. I'm gonna butcher the names. So I'm gonna wait for them on what their van name is. But this is a non-stealth tour because of a custom wrap job, obviously. Look at this thing, but it's, it's super BA. And I can't wait to show it off. It's some of the most custom DIY things that I've ever seen. Are you guys ready to show me? Yeah. Where's the enthusiasm? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this! Uh, hey guys, what's going on? Hanging out. All right, so I got I got Ed on the right, I got Kyle on the left. Kyle, uh, you don't really like the camera, but or do you like the camera? Uh, I mean, I don't have any. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> There's no version. All right. Of the camera. So I think Ed's gonna give most of the tour. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, it'll be our guy. Before we step inside, uh, you, it's kind of apparent that you have some sort of customizations to the outside. Yes, we do, we do. We lucked out with this van a bit and we bought it from Freightliner in Portland. They have a wonderful wrap shop. They design and install wraps. So uh, we stuck with it. It was a pretty cool van. I think they used it for their demo. You may have seen it on a billboard. Yeah, band. yeah. Uh, who knew it'd be famous? Didn't you recently do a picture of you parked in front of said billboard? Uh, I did, yes, <laughs> yes. I was capitalizing on someone else's ad campaign, but it's very reciprocal. <laughs> I feel like they've gotten a lot of free press from us uh, floating around town, so. It's pretty cool. It's polarizing, and I, I like it. Uh, I think in general, most yeah. people like it. It's actually come in handy a few times, like we've driven through some brush before and it's saved the paint job, so. Good point. It's doing its work. It's a nice little graphic punch. It is not a stealth van, though. I was just about to say, you're not city dwelling in this thing. Uh, no, no. Uh, I mean, there are some stealth vans that are made for cities, but yeah. this is not your goal. This is not what you guys wanted to do. True. true. Okay. We wanted this to be a, a legitimate adventure van. So we're big trail runners and mountain bikers. We adjusted the way we travel and we've uh, sort of like hit the road a few times and just wanted a, like a really sweet spot to come and hang out and to use as a base camp for adventure. We're not going to show the back until the end, okay. uh, the, 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 all the good stuff back there, yeah. but I actually think the inside of this is phenomenal. So if you wouldn't mind, let's step on in. Do the, the van uh, reveal. If you want to do the van reveal, sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you left the lights off for me because you did something so fancy <laughs> and so cool uh, that I want to talk about it. Okay. Uh, I don't see any switches, so you don't. what's That's going on here? intentional. Back up for a second. We had a nice yin-yang in terms of the build. Um, Kyle is definitely the engineer of the whole <laughs> the whole situation. I am definitely more of the like design creative, like, hey, this is what I want it to look like. Hey, how do you want to use this van? It actually worked out really well. Like, we didn't get in each other's way. We didn't fight the whole time. Not a single fight. I fight with myself, so I don't know how the heck you guys <laughs> oh, do that. we definitely fought with ourselves. <laughs> like, there was a lot of swearing, uh, there was a lot of learning, uh, it was a 10 week build, so... Wow, that's from, fast! From beginning to end, yeah. Uh, so we got the van obviously from Freightliner and they hadn't done any of the interior stuff. Um, Freightliner did some of the exterior stuff and that was that was already done. Yeah. And then you guys just did the whole inside yourself. Exactly. And you added some exterior stuff and we'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll walk you through those things. Okay. Anyway, back to the lights. Please. So design problem to solve was we <laughs> don't like all of the like RV lights that are backlit and you know, we couldn't customize the color that we wanted, yada, yada, yada. So we hid all of the switches for the lighting. There's a fantastic company located in the mountains of Slovenia somewhere. <laughs> yeah, how did you and... find them? How did you find them, Kyle? Some you have no idea? Googling. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, just Googling. Yeah, I didn't find it on a van site. Yeah, so, uh, we actually yeah. spent probably like two days just Googling like, you know, concealed switches, like motion sensing switches, things like that. Yeah, kind of geeked out on, on how to solve a problem that probably isn't really a problem <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's, it's not i mean it's just a super cool like you know bougie feature i guess yeah, exactly yeah. it's pretty bougie so uh we've got essentially like three zones in the van this first zone here is under cabinet lighting super bright leds like everyone else is using um and then we've got a front uh forward section and then a rear section and they're all just like hidden behind this and I didn't cut that you you hit that all yes. in the sound one touch <laughs> done one touch uh, and they are dimmable too so you can just kind of hold your hand over that and that'll dim they're a little touchy so sometimes you can like <laughs> turn both of them off take a few minutes to get used to um, but we were able to hide a couple of different sensors in the B pillar and the 
D pillar in the back too. So we've got sort of one of one touch on off switches. That is super awesome. Please leave them on for me uh, during the rest I of the will. video I because uh, we obviously want to see the van. We want to see this beauty. Right behind your head, before we get down to the bench, you have a custom face yes. to a cabinet. Yes. You want to tell me about that? Of course. Kyle wanted to buy a CNC machine. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to design some cabinet faces. <laughs> we put those two things together. And we bought a uh, CNC machine for home use. Uh, Maker Made is the company that makes it. Pretty easy to set up. We used essentially our two car garage as our shop to do this build. We built everything outside of the van and then installed. With the CNC machine, we were able to customize these. This is a Mount Hood topographic map. That is super fancy. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it's a nice way to kind of like put our stamp on something. The other mountain in the back is from Mont Blanc in Europe. This is actually Wildwood Trail in Portland end to end. Uh, so that's what the route map looks like. Um, and then this is the uh, National Parks sign. sign outline. Oh! So <laughs> I didn't even realize that's yeah. the shape of that. Yeah, it's a little template for that. Quite a flexible table space as well yeah as you can it's that's yeah i thought that was just i thought that was, the reason of the shape was for that reason i didn't realize it was because of the it looks like the uh the signs yeah there's some hidden design yeah. cues in there <laughs> you guys keep on blowing my mind so you have this bench yep uh that obviously one of you can sit at one of yep. you can sit where i am which is a swivel seat yep you can have dinner across from each other. Driver's seat swivels as well. Usually what happens is we swivel the seats around and the dog sits there. Of course. Uh, yeah. The dog, which we didn't even mention, is, uh, is what, what was your dog's name again? My name is Coda. Coda. Yeah. I'm getting them mixed up between the Coda and then the name, the name of the van. Okay, so the name of the van, also with a K, uh, I'm the only one in the family that doesn't have a K associated with the name. Name of the van is Kogai. Kogai. Is, yeah, K-O-G-A-I. Okay. Uh, and it's Japanese for outdoors. So we were Fancy. very Japanese slash Scandinavian inspired with the materials and the build out and just having a very functional, simple van. We figured that the outdoor van in Japanese would make sense. I have the bench cushion made, it just snaps on. And then we've just got like our external camp stove um, we've got like our shore power cable in there, you know, some emergency water, an extra propane tank, that sort of thing. When you lifted that up, I noticed that uh, there was 80-20 in there. There is 80-20. So, everywhere. 80-20 everywhere. <laughs> I guess, uh, Kyle, you use all 80-20 for all of your framing. Oh, for all the framing, yeah. You used which kind of 80-20? Metric 80-20. I use three different sizes in the oh. back for more weight. I use the 40-40, which is centimeter square for the tall cabinet and the bench you were just looking at i used the 30 30 i believe for the galley and the upper cabinets which didn't need to be as beefy i used the the lightest the 2020 and there is a trick to get that a little lower on a price point uh 8020 supplied the big stuff but for the smaller size you can get these uh build your own 3D printer shops a lot of times sell these things. So this is from Ziltech in Texas, Z-Y-L-T-E-C-H, and it was about a third of the price. Really? Why didn't I meet you guys like when I was doing mine? My Jeep, come on, <laughs> this sucks. All right, fair enough. Thank you for sharing that with so everybody. We like bougie things, but we also don't want to pay bougie prices. So. <laughs> Again, for the, same, for the same thing. Why did you go metric? We are in America, we're in, you know, Oregon. Yeah, yeah. Times will change eventually, maybe. Uh, <laughs> We've been saying that for a hundred yeah. years. <laughs> um, it's a Mercedes van. Everything in the Mercedes side of the world is metric, so we thought we'd make it match. Our toolkit that we have to carry is smaller, too. Thank you for saying it was a Mercedes, because I never even asked at the top of the video. What yeah. the heck are we in? We're in a 2019 two-wheel drive Mercedes Sprinter. Now, how come you went with the two over 4x4? Four four? Uh, honestly, there weren't a lot of 4x4s four available. We're not overlanding in this vehicle. We are... You know, we're going to trailhead. I wanted something that we could drive up to the mountain, so I've got a set of snow tires, throw some Blizzax on it, and you're pretty good to go. Wait so a minute, you're telling me that we don't need 4x4s? <laughs> what? I mean, everyone can keep on a rebel and, like, yeah. you know, doing all their crazy things in there, but, uh, yeah, you, you won't find me, like, somewhere in a situation that I can't get out of. Simmering. Yep. Uh, phenomenal little contraption. Yep, but it's great for monitoring the tanks, the battery, what's consuming your power. Now that we're talking a little bit about electrical, uh, what water tanks do we have and power? Northwest conversions over wheel 
22 gallons with yeah. two water tank in the back, uh, 80 liter. Yeah. <laughs> now you're giving me all metric. And then we've got the three 100 amp hour lithium batteries on the other side to kind of balance that out. 300 watts of solar yeah. on the roof. And I think you kind of designed and built your whole kit yourself. Yeah. There's a reason, by the way, everybody, I'm talking to Kyle for technical stuff because, again, he was the engineer to this, yeah. and uh, Ed I, was I more of the designer. I 100% of the credit <laughs> for, the, uh, for the actual, like, you know, mechanical and electrical engineering. Uh, I'm, you know, definitely more of the designer and the finisher. And what about the layout? Who picked this layout? Was this a joint effort? Uh, yeah, it was a joint yeah, effort. Joint effort. Yeah, we think... mocked it all up with cardboard boxes Yeah, first. we did. Did the you? Old, yeah. We did <laughs> That's the old, awesome. Like, there were a lot of different configurations. We had a couple of non-negotiables we wanted to make sure that the vi the bikes were in the van that dictated essentially the rear design in terms of like the height that we would need the bed to be at we didn't want to make a bed every day so that's permanent fixed the sacrifice early on was uh this space right here i thought could be like a shower faded uh, on the shower situation um do we have a shower? Oh, you, you do, and we're gonna get to that. It's actually in yeah. the back. My bad. My bad. <laughs> I'm a big fan of what Nomad Bands is doing. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, um, they're good people. Based out of BC, if you've got you know a couple hundred grand to build <laughs> uh, to pay for a build, it's, cool. <laughs> it's awesome. But like they do a pan on the floor right here, which I thought was pretty cool, with like a drop down curtain. The idea of the condensation and dealing with like wet stuff inside the van was something we didn't really want to struggle with. All right, so talk to me about this galley. Beautiful countertop. Thank you. Thank uh, you. What did um, we go with? So we went with a paper stone material. We wanted this to be, you know, we wanted to not have a lot of waste and not that you can greenly build out a fan. You know, low toxin finishing material for the wood. And cool. This is a great material. It's a composite. It's essentially like compressed paper with resin. Um, so it is post-consumer. It's a green building product. The other benefit of it is you can use woodworking tools um, to do all the fabrication. And you can also go with either a shiny or a matte finish based on how you sand the surface. We did learn along the way that there were some things that we didn't have the capacity to do or the skills to do. Um, fabricating the countertop, even though we thought we could do it, was one of those. Hopefully we did a test piece <laughs> um, <laughs> for two reasons. One, the router is really scary. Uh, and then two, like this throws off a lot of like black dust when you're routing it out. So yeah. it was actually a really good thing that we didn't do it in our garage because their entire garage would have been covered with black dust. We've got, you know, the flip up extension here, which is great. It gets an extra 16 inches of room or so. Perfectly positioned for someone walking into the van. So it's Kyle has hit his head on it at least one. Little backsplash uh, addition is, is nice. Cheated a little bit when we built out all of the drawers. Uh, we used Bloom hardware throughout the hole. And Bloom actually does a really good job of you can buy these drawers essentially like the drawer is is one piece here that you assemble and then all you do is put a front on it so essentially like metal drawer sides mm -hmm. and slides and then you just cut the panel that you want for the front and the bottom and the bottom and then uh it's super easy to attach and and construct what was it called again bloom is bloom the yeah b-l-u-m is it made for rvs or is it just anything it's actually you can use like higher end interior kitchen yeah. oh okay products. yeah, yeah. So, and you were like screw it i'm just not building <laughs> cabinetry it's... right like i want you know i want a soft closed drawer all that sort of stuff latches on them so they don't fly open they make all of the uh interior hinges they're a little oh, right here they're a little beefy um but you know they're like fully those hinges you can fully adjust and i like it yeah and there's no other like those are that actually stayed up yeah. 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 I mean, it'll it'll stay up like when we're driving. It, it got essentially like propane on one side, little little trash bin, and then our gray water tank is five gallon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's your cooktop. That cooktop was here. Um, like I said, we do most of our cooking outside, but little two burner propane powered nice. Dometic stove. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Ceiling design really interesting. Ceiling design very. Uh, simple and, and aesthetic, but was probably the trickiest thing to do. Uh, <laughs> Ed mentioned he got angry. This would be, yeah, yeah. This, this, this is, is a lot of F-bombs. Yeah. This is a lot of uh, yeah. Yeah. SH words. This, yeah. is, this is where my anger came in. So yeah, I wanted a slatted ceiling. Uh, we adjusted the width of these panels so that we didn't have wood on wood throughout the van that creates a lot of creaking and noise potentially. The challenge was, you know, how do I line these up? So essentially this break right here, these are two panels mm -hmm. um, that are solid panels that were, I foamed, upholstered those, and then- Wait, you didn't buy a kit? No, no kits, no kits. What? <laughs> yeah. This uh, looks like a professional kit. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how much of a pain was that? That's good. Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was a pain. Uh, I did I did have these slats. Uh, again, you figure out where you can save some time, some money, mm -hmm. some frustration. Uh, so I took these to uh, custom someplace in Northwest Woodworking. It's okay. Like a custom woodworker in Portland, and they'll do small jobs. They'll do big jobs. I took a you know a couple four by eight sheets of plywood and said I want two and a half inch slats, and they ripped them down, and I picked them up the next day. Probably saved me. <laughs> oh, a lot <laughs> of time. Saved me like lots of time. Half a day worth of work. Um, I still had to like hand finish each of them and sure. you know. Top, top coat them all and that sort of stuff. But yeah, then each one of these panels is fastened to this larger panel, which then is fastened to the ceiling. We were very cognizant of not putting a lot of holes in the van, so we mm -hmm. used all the existing, for the most ribs, part, existing yeah. ribs. Um, nice. we, used, we used plus nuts, not rib nuts, for anyone doing their own Oh, okay. So these are all going into like nuts, I presume. No, these are not. These are just bolted in. Oh, they're bolted in, excuse yeah, me. see some stealth bolts. Yeah, there's one right every here. now and then, and that's what's actually holding it into the yeah. Oh, so, and I, I with see the what you did. Those, so so you can't really tell. I mean, I was in here for a while before we started filming, and <laughs> I never saw them. Uh, and then you inlaid uh, track lighting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the easier part of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was no F-bombs. Yeah, Got was, you. That was super bright LEDs. They saw the lighting. They saw the channels. They saw the channel covers. I see your bed is massive for a van. Yeah. I, I always uh, say that, but... It's clean. good old... Queen size minus an inch. Um, so lengthwise we, minus uh, an inch. Lengthwise, uh, widthwise. Widthwise minus an inch. Yeah. Okay. Another one of the things that we decided we didn't want to do was, um, you know, try and figure out how to custom install the flares. Um, so we used Flare Space flares. They recommended an installer for us, Body Shop. It was probably one of our biggest expenses, all in that cost. You mean you mean this wasn't expensive right here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we <laughs> joke that everything's a thousand. Everything's a thousand. <laughs> everything's a thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Except for the flares. Yeah. Those are not a thousand. <laughs> we found an auto body shop. They did that. So we've got the extra eight inches or so of uh, space in the back so we can sleep sideways. We're comfortable back there. We don't have a lot of extra room. I did have the uh, same company that I had do the um, upholstered bench seat. I had them custom make a mattress for us. Five inch memory foam mattress. All right. So before we go to the back, because we can actually see the back yeah. underneath here. Before we go to the back, I wanted you to talk about this. Uh, this this big old mamma jamma right here. Oh yes. Uh, which I referenced a minute ago. Yes, the Itra Frigo, directly imported from uh, from Italy. So we positioned this intentionally at this height, so it's just easier to load and unload. Sure. Um, and door swinging this way allows us to like pop in and grab a beer pretty easily. Uh, and we wanted something full size. It has a freezer in it too, so you know you can have ice cream after a trail run. It's also really easy to install. It's just got you know a nice little metal frame that fit on the 8020. Nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it was perfectly uh, perfectly positioned. It sort of dictated you know the dimensions of the cabinet that we were building. And in. you guys also mentioned to me uh, this particular model has an external compressor. It does. It does. So you can't see it, but behind this drawer back here. Um, it's just tucked away back in the corner. And I'm assuming that's important because having an external compressor gives you more room inside. Inside the pressure, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because if you go to these other companies that have these compressors, they take it up room. up like a third of the yeah. usable space in the refrigerator. It's crazy. Good job, Victor Freegro, for doing that. Yeah. You know, we went with a pretty bomb-proof floor. Um, it is red. It is red. Uh, the, Which is like the, the only yeah. non-black and white yeah. uh, thing in your van here. Sounds yeah. bougie, but German <laughs> engineering. Like, you know, the red sort of is like the sport package <laughs> and it's like a it's, it's like a i guess it's like a vinyl uh it's actually a rubber rubber a rubber, um, so rubber. another yeah, yeah another green-ish building product a lot of people use this and it's uh, just the coin mat flooring mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but i of course wanted something a little bit different so rope is the company that makes this and they're 20 by 20 tiles um and i like the square it's essentially the same material so for us, it was a pretty easy installation. We just take the Mercedes subfloor out, lay it on the garage floor, cut the template out. There's your template, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, you know, we've got a few cuts to make on these pieces. Home Depot stocks the gray and the black. Yeah. Oh, okay. You have to, you have to order, order the red? Yeah. Special order the red. Yeah, just special order the red. Um, again, like Nomad Vans, who I really like, um, they use this flooring. For some reason, they don't like to tell anyone what company makes it. But Ouch, Nomad Vans. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Yep. It comes in like 80 different colors. Um, it's used in a lot of like industrial buildings and hospitals and things like that. All right, you guys want to show me the, the exterior yeah. as well as uh, yeah. the back here? Absolutely. 
All right, so Ed, uh, well, that I'm outside, um, you, I wanted to show you this window off because maybe people are going to ask about it. Yeah, he did not have a window on the slider um, and decided that it was something that, because you oftentimes will position the door to the most impressive view, uh, obviously. <laughs> so we were just like staring at the inside of the van most of the time. Um, so it's nice to have a window we added after. This is a, actually a Mercedes OEM window that Kyle did some research and they're really nice actually was able to source yeah and so you know there's a lot of different companies that make a lot of different windows um, you know t-vent windows and things like that which are great yeah how come you went with the slider over like a t-vent uh, I, I, we kind of wanted like a larger opening yeah I mean the uh, thing is I mean look at it it's a yeah, massive I mean, opening like I could actually like kind of <laughs> yeah. yeah so I also wanted a full glass window I didn't want a composite oh okay yeah 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 for sure Mercedes design piece so it fits nicely and works well and I'm assuming you can open and shut that door with that, op that window open. I was always scared to do it with mine. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. Watch it break now. Yes. <laughs> like, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a Tesla <laughs> moment, right? Yeah. You've got the, the Fiamma, you know, awning. Yep. Phenomenal. Yeah, pretty, pretty standard awning. We have an Illuminesque rack up top there. Um, that was part of the kit that we bought the van with. Uh, yeah, it just saved us some time and some money having someone install it. Before we bought it. The biggest thing about having a two-wheel drive is you can put better tires on this. Yes. In the back now, you got all this stuff going on back here. Uh, <laughs> we jokingly call this our testosterone rack. <laughs> absolutely uh, useless, but it looks good. absolutely useless. Uh, I wouldn't say it's completely useless. There's uses behind all of them, but have we used them? No, not really. A lot of it's just there for emergencies uh, or to get ourselves out of weird situations if we needed to. But Alvans makes great products. Obviously, we've got their ladder that's shaped and contoured. It's quite nice. That was on there. Uh, was the on there, part of the kit. The, kit. the Sherpa rack, as they call it. Is another great piece that Alvans makes and you added that though yeah. that was an add-on yeah. from you added this infinitely can you know you can just reconfigure it in a ton of different ways it easily attaches to the hinges so there's no weird drilling except for one hole yeah. and I'm uh, assuming the propane is for exterior cooking yes yeah, for exterior cooking it's just like a nice extra thing to have sure yeah um, Kyle found this uh, Expedition Essentials is a company that makes this DOT approved DOT approved no way yeah so nice yeah, people have asked us like, why do you have propane mounted on the back of your van right where somebody could run into you? But apparently this is a pretty bomb proof. Bomb proof, yeah. 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 Uh, and then the red thing is a shovel. The red thing is a shovel. So you have ways to get out of stuck situations. You've we got do. the tracks, you've yeah, got the does. shovel, you got the better tires. Yeah, yeah. The last thing you need would be a winch. Yeah. Yeah, but you're okay. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> friends with Jeeps. Friends, oh, wait, I, so I'm gonna come and pull you out now? Great. Yeah. Why don't you open that up and uh, we'll show this back off because uh, You've got even more stuff going on. Yeah, a lot of trickery happening back here. I mean, if you <laughs> want to start with what you got going on over here, it would be great. Yeah, Kyle's going to walk you through. <laughs> yeah, when you show me the one thing that you know I'm getting to, I think it's super cool. I don't know why, I just think it's cool. Oh, okay, so in the back, we've got the plumbing side and the electrical side. Um, plumbing, we've got an outdoor shower here. Hot and cold water. Here, here. This is just a kayak. Thank you. I was waiting for you to say it, man. Uh, all right, so it's a kayaking thingamajiggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gear holder. Gear holder. Thank you. Yeah. You see them in kayaks. Yeah, like yeah. on the top of a kayak. Yeah, where you, like, genius. Store all your dry gear. Freaking yeah. genius. What I found interesting is you mentioned hot water a second ago. Yep. We didn't talk about that. What do you got? Got an external hot water heater. It is powered by the or heated by the engine coolant. Doesn't require any power. Iso temp, ISO isotherm, ISO temp, ISO isotherm, one I of those. Fused, stone by Wabasto. And that's your heating actually as well for your van. No. Well, you have you have a Wabasto. Yeah, we have a Wabasto, two separate units. We have the one that's under the front seat, like everybody else. Cool, and that's where your water tank is underneath yeah, there the water as well. Tanks down here, pumping stuff is here. Plug here. Uh, a core. A core is a company doing uh, outdoor taps and fill doesn't leak drip anything. Nothing. As soon as you take the thing off, it stops both ends. Not a lot of RV products, but a lot of marine product. Yes, Sprint to better quality. I mean, technically even Lagoon is a marine yeah, product yeah. at first. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, so. There are a lot of good marine supply shops in Seattle too, so delivery time was quick and prices were actually better than Amazon and a lot of stuff. So just moving, we'll just move right into what we got this platform deck here. Yeah, or what yeah, you were about to talk uh, about something else. I was going to talk about the bed really quick yeah. and say, you know, this is again 80 20. It's the larger. Uh, the 40 40? 40 40. Um, and uh, we've got three independent panels here. The bed itself is fixed, so we used both the left and the right, the plumbing cabinet and the electrical cabinet as our anchors to that. So 
the bed is bolted to that. These are bolted in multiple points um, on the side. Oh, of the that's how you did it. Everything you didn't. It's very much like modular. nothing's going anywhere. So your cross beams are not bolted to the walls. No. Right. Whoa. Yeah. You yeah. just bolted it regular, and they're the same height. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't you do it yeah, that way? Because so, you can, you know, dial in the height of the cabinets with the eighty twenty material. That's quite really. That's good. Yeah. Now we got then, a deck. Yeah, we've got the sled that pulls out, heavy duty, like you think they're 500 pound rated um, slides. And uh, we usually have, we've usually got like two bikes in the back here, but you know, this will come all the way out. So there's easy uh, loading and unloading of bikes. Or really awesome. Else we have back there. And your outdoor shower is actually in, on there as well. Yeah. 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 Cool. A little pop up tent. This is all your electrical setup. The guts. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. Yep. Uh, most electrical is uh, just a mess. Yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, it would all look beautiful when it was laid out. On the board. <laughs> I saw these when I was inside. Uh, but you have like these cubbies that are up here. Yeah, these are a great little time saver and storage space um, DIY van in Hood River. I have to give them a great plug. Hein, who runs that company, it was just a fantastic resource. We bought all of our insulation. Uh, we use 3M insulate nice okay the whole van yep. um, floor ceiling walls we were able to drive out to hood river get all that stuff from him you know we saved on shipping and then he does do custom panels mm -hmm. um, he's got a cnc machine so if you've got a van he's getting into transits but sprinters as well time saving things like sure. these are factory but he uses the same abs so we've got these behind the electrical and the plumbing cabinet i did all the rest of the templating for the interior panels and the walls which is just a maddening <laughs> trial and error exercise and i know people are getting into it and i would say like if you're building a van out yourself it's one of those things that like you totally invest in somebody building the, <laughs> the <laughs> yep. templating and, yeah. and the panels 100 bucks sounds like a lot for a panel but it's it. it's really not <laughs> i also sourced all of the all of this fabric it's pretty much what everybody else uses um perfect fit in portland and They've it's like got, the marathon weave or whatever yeah, yep. marathon weave um you know, obviously a lot of people use the light gray. I went with this darker gray because it's got the same kind of color thread through You it. just wanted to be different. I did. I wanted to be different. And I wanted like that two-tone. So Yeah, like, I like it a lot. Actually, we've got, you know, the darker bottom and kind of lighten up towards the ceiling. Well, now that we're neighbors, uh, we're going to have to do some camping together. What do yeah. you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. We, uh... I might be hanging in your van more than you know my tent, but uh, we'll, we'll do some we'll do some camping. Yeah, that sounds good. We're full time in Bend now. You can say that we're Bend residents, yeah. uh, which is pretty sweet. It's not a stealth van, so if you see us in town, say hey. Yeah, so, so give a wave, right? We've almost always got coffee or beer in the van. Uh, I like both of those. I didn't even say you're you know if you want to plug an Instagram, uh, a website, or yeah, something along sure. those lines. I, uh, we did. We didn't do a like totally comprehensive build blog, but we uh, I built a site out called HowWeAdventure.com. How we? How we adventure. Oh, right. H O W and then W E. Yep. Got you. Adventure. Uh, so HowWeAdventure.com. Got you. Also my Instagram handle. Okay. Uh, it's also my YouTube channel. Awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but, I didn't. Even... But I don't have any YouTube videos. But <laughs> okay. One day. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And we didn't do a full build blog, but there's uh, we put as many resources as we could on there for people so that awesome. uh, it made their lives easier. It's a lot to manage. Like, Welcome to my life. Thank you guys. I have much respect <laughs> for anyone that's like <laughs> full time doing this uh, and managing a blog and all that stuff. So yeah, you can check it out. We'll have some adventures on there, you know, travel tips, things like that, but it's not something we do full time. Right now we just want to have a good time in the van and not have it be about content creation. <laughs> awesome. Uh, that, that's a great, I love that. So keep at it. Uh, I can't wait to camp with you guys. I can't wait to show more of uh, your living and how everything works out. How We Adventure website as well as Instagram. Thank you so much. And Kyle, honestly, I can't thank you guys enough.